One winter's morning, during a snowstorm, I took my mother to the lab for some blood tests. It was white knuckle driving on snowy, icy roads. We were headed home and going around a corner very slowly, and all of a sudden we hit black ice. And almost like in slow motion, the car headed for the curb. Thunk! Well, I turned to my mom quickly and said, Mom, are you okay? Yes. Well, we proceeded kind of cautiously and slowly. And then I said in an also sarcastic kind of way, so I suppose you're going to sue me for whiplash. <laughs> Instantly, she jumped in. Oh, oh, my neck. Oh, my neck hurts. Oh, I can't move my head. And then she said, I have to call. And she tried to say the name of one of the lawyers who advertises on TV. It was so spontaneous and so hilarious that we laughed until we were screaming. We eventually came up for air, but my mother continued this for days, <laughs> calling me in the morning, and the minute I'd answer, oh, my whiplash, I have to. <laughs> I'm so grateful for what I have learned from my parents about being cheerful, lighthearted, and yes, sometimes absolutely silly. It's a blessing to have been asked to ponder the topic of being merry and praising the Lord. This is another of my soul search topics. I pray that what I have prepared will be uplifting, comforting, thought-provoking, and happifying, all in just 25 minutes. This is amazing. They've got words. They just follow along. My talk is not there. <laughs> it's magic. I've never used one of these. <laughs> Come on and look. <laughs> the prophet Joseph Smith taught that happiness is the object and design of our existence. That's why our Heavenly Father's plan is so often called the great plan of happiness. Happiness is part of our nature, as it is part of God's nature. Listen as Alma Jr. teaches his son Corianton about this. And now, my son, all men that are in a state of nature, or I would say in a carnal state, are without God in the world, and they have gone contrary to the nature of God. Therefore, they are in a state contrary to the nature of happiness. We are born with a naturally sunny, optimistic, cheerful disposition. Feeling joy and happiness doesn't mean we're always laughing our heads off. Although laughter is very therapeutic, President Faust, don't forget to laugh at the silly things that happen. Humor is a powerful force for good when used with discretion. Its physical expression, laughter, is highly therapeutic. He's right. When we laugh hard, our heart rate speeds up, the circulatory and immune systems are stimulated, and more endorphins are produced. And then they go to SeaWorld and perform. <laughs> In Proverbs, we read, A merry heart doeth good like medicine. For the ten of you who have not heard this, I was told that Peekaboo Street, the great Olympic skier, wants to become a nurse and work in ICU so she can answer the phone, Peekaboo, ICU. <laughs> now, didn't that feel like a good dose of medicine? Sometimes laughing together feels so unifying to me. Abraham Lincoln once said, With the fearful strain that is on me night and day, if I did not laugh, I should die. I heard that if you want and need to laugh, and you try to suppress it, it goes to your hips and spreads out. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Hinckley had, and I'm sure still has, a wonderful sense of humor, and said, the only way to get through life is to laugh your way through it. You either have to laugh or cry. I prefer to laugh. Crying gives me a headache. <laughs> How we miss her. A good sense of humor can help us in many ways in our lives. President Gordon B. Hinckley, we need to have a little humor in our lives. We better take seriously that which should be taken seriously, but at the same time we can bring a touch of humor in now and again. If the time ever comes when we can't smile at ourselves, it will be a sad time. Several years ago, my friend Helen said that out in Vernon, Utah, where they had far too many crickets, 
In their award newsletter, they included some cricket recipes. <laughs> I have a special appreciation for those who can laugh even in the midst of their challenges. I heard on the radio the other day that there was a woman who found out she had cancer and ended up writing a book called Cancer, cancer I can't even say it. She wrote a book called Cancer Schmancer. Good for her. Well, someone who tells jokes all the time, to whom everything is funny, does not have a sense of humor. And if we hurt someone's feelings, it isn't funny. The essence of good humor is love. For a few years at the Missionary Training Center, I supervised those who were learning American Sign Language. One day, the supervisor brought her group of missionaries to my office. I could tell by the look on the supervisor's face that something funny was about to happen. She informed me that their group had been asked to sing in the Christmas program at the MTC that December. She said, do you want to know what we've chosen to sing? And I said, I'd love to know. She said, our first number is, do you hear what I hear? <laughs> and our second number is, I heard him come. <laughs> and all the missionaries, several of whom were deaf, laughed and clapped, and so did I. I want to return to President Faust's comment about humor being a powerful force for good when used with discretion. I've done a lot of thinking in my life about the difference between lightheartedness and light-mindedness. I think light-mindedness is thoughtless, literally, without thought. Often there is hypocrisy and scorn associated with light-minded laughter. It is irreverent and unholy. It separates us from the Spirit. It is the things we talk and laugh about which don't encourage or cheer or edify. Lightheartedness is goodness, joyful goodness. It includes all that blesses and happifies us and others. It's being of good cheer while focusing on the things that matter. It's a virtue. Truman Madsen tells of an experience Heber C. Kimball and his family had. Listen to Heber C. Kimball. He is praying with his family and in the midst of the prayer says, Father, bless so-and-so. Then he bursts into a loud laugh. I can imagine the heads of his children popping up and, his, and their eyes opening. There is a slight pause, and then he says, Lord, it makes me laugh to pray about some people. And he goes on with his prayer. <laughs> I leave it to you, says Brother Madsen, to say whether this is light-mindedness or a profound intimacy with the Lord. He knows we have a funny bone. He gave it to us. <laughs> President Harold B. Lee, I have never believed that in order to be righteous, one must be sad-faced and solemn. People approved of the Lord have always been those who have laughed and danced and sung, as well as worshiped, but at all times within the proper bounds and not to excess. In September of 1985, Elder Ballard came to the Missionary Training Center. And he spoke on this topic to the missionaries. And one thing he said that I will always remember is this, light-mindedness offends. And then I think he paid a compliment to the missionaries. He said, you can tell. Then he added, if we said you couldn't have a sense of humor, all the brethren would be in jeopardy. President Boyd K. Packer, a good sense of humor is a characteristic of a well-balanced person. It has always been apparent that the prophets were men with very alert and pleasing senses of humor. I remember a time in the tabernacle years ago during general conference, a Sunday morning when it was very, very hot. Everyone was fanning themselves with whatever they could find. President Hinckley got up. He looked out over the congregation and said, it's hot in here. We know it's hot in here. We know you're hot but you're not as hot as you're going to be if you don't repent. <laughs> the laughter was innocent, <laughs> in instant, and loud and joyful. We really are happy people. We can't help it. We know too much. <laughs> we are like the Nephites. We live after the manner of happiness, and we work at having happy hearts without being like-minded. We certainly recognize the importance of reverence for all that is sacred. President Packer, 
There are some things just too sacred to discuss. It is not that they are secret, but they are sacred, to be harbored and to be protected and regarded with the deepest reverence. We are reverent about our Heavenly Father and about His Son, His Holy Son, Jesus, including being reverent about their names. Jesus' name, after all, is the only name under heaven that can save us. President McKay, the greatest manifestation of spirituality is reverence. Reverence is profound respect mingled with love. Happiness does not mean an absence of adversity, at least not so you'd notice. Why would our baptismal covenant include bearing one another's burdens if no one had any? Why would that covenant include that we would mourn with those that mourn and comfort those who stood in need of comfort if nobody ever mourned or nobody ever needed comforting? Elder Jack H. Gosland, I am convinced if we are to have happiness in our hearts, we must learn how to preserve it in our hearts in the midst of trouble and trial. We can control our attitude toward adversity. Some people are defeated and embittered by it, while others triumph over it and cultivate godlike attributes in the midst of it. Probably each of us can think of someone who has been refined and who has become sanctified and more godlike through their trials. Elder Gosling used the word cultivate. This sounds like work. We work to develop godlike attributes. President Hinckley has invited us to cultivate an attitude of happiness, cultivate a spirit of optimism. Life may not always be exactly what, in my, what we had in mind, but we're never alone. Have you noticed that sometimes you draw closer to your Heavenly Father when you are deeply in need of Him? That's been my experience. And He comes. He is always willing to come. Listen again to what happened to the people of Alma when they were in bondage and being persecuted by those former priests of King Noah. Lift up your heads and be of good comfort, and I will ease the burdens upon your shoulders that you, even you cannot feel them upon your backs, even while you are in bondage. And this will I do, that ye may stand as witnesses for me hereafter and that ye may know of a surety that I, the Lord God, do visit my people in their afflictions. Many of you can also be witnesses for him hereafter, testifying that he also visited you in your afflictions. Elder James E. Talmadge, happiness springs from the deeper fountains of the soul and is not infrequently accompanied by tears. Have you never been so happy that you have had to weep? I have, he said. We have too, haven't we? Psalm 30, verse 5, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Happiness is a result of righteousness. In 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 13, Lehi is teaching his son Jacob about opposition. And if ye shall say there is no law, ye shall also say there is no sin. And if ye shall say there is no sin, ye shall also say there is no righteousness. And if there be no righteousness, there be no happiness. And if there be no righteousness nor happiness, there be no punishment nor misery. And if these things are not, there is no God. There is a God. There is righteousness. There is happiness. President Hinckley, happiness comes of righteousness. He teaches that wickedness, sin, selfishness, and greed never bring happiness. And then, happiness lies in living the principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is a happifying thing to do. It is true that wickedness never was happiness, I submit it is also true that righteousness never was misery. It's adversity. It's deep water and fiery trials, but it's not misery. And we can choose to cultivate either happiness or misery. Elder Gosland, 
One thing we can count on is that neither here nor hereafter are we suddenly going to emerge with qualities we have not developed or a pattern of living for which we have not prepared ourselves. Our joy in God's kingdom will be a natural extension of the happiness we cultivate in this life. A few weeks ago, a woman shared with me a very interesting experience she had in her state conference. She said her state president stood up and asked if all those who were happy would please raise their hands. Many did. To them, he said, congratulations, you are candidates for the celestial kingdom. The rest of you need to repent. <laughs> And then he said, I am convinced that only happy people will be in the celestial kingdom. That is worth pondering. Moroni illustrates this in Mormon chapter 9, verse 14. And then cometh the judgment of the Holy One upon them. And then cometh the time that he that is filthy shall be filthy still. And he that is righteous shall be righteous still. And he that is happy shall be happy still, and he that is unhappy shall be unhappy still. We will be raised to happiness according to our desires for happiness and according to the degree to which we have cultivated happiness right here, right now, an attitude of happiness and a spirit of optimism. Joy and happiness are gifts of the Spirit. President Marion G. Romney, the key to happiness or joy is to get the spirit and keep it. Listen to the way Heber C. Kimball shares this. I am perfectly satisfied that my Father and my God is a cheerful, pleasant, lively, good-natured being. Why? Because I am pleasant, lively, cheerful, and good-natured when I have His spirit. Has that been your experience? When you feel the spirit, do you often feel joyful, cheerful, good-natured, lively? Joy brings the Spirit, and the Spirit brings joy. Brigham Young, where is happiness, real happiness? Nowhere but in God. By possessing the Spirit of our holy religion, we are happy in the morning, we are happy at noon, and we are happy in the evening. Every Latter-day Saint who has experienced the love of God in his heart realizes that he is filled with joy, happiness, and consolation. Think of someone you enjoy being around and think of why. Maybe you're with them today. In all the years I've asked people this question, I cannot think of a single time when someone said to me, I like to be around Fifi. She is such a downer. She is really negative. I can't be around her more than two minutes without feeling just awful. <laughs> Cheerful, optimistic people are pleasant to be around. This certainly includes President Hinckley, who has helped so many of us smile and laugh in happy ways. I feel that his optimism and good cheer has come in large measure because of his goodness, his righteousness, his absolute obedience. Joy shows in our countenance. Brigham Young. It does make the devil mad that he cannot afflict his people so as to make them have a sad countenance. <laughs> and then he said, There is not a man or woman on this earth whose peace is made with God and who are associated with holy beings and seeking after holy principles, but their countenances are lit up with a lamp of divine cheerfulness. This is taught in Proverbs, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. And from President Hinckley, let the light of the gospel shine in your faces wherever you go and in whatever you do. I think that's attractive. Over 100 years ago, President George Q. Cannon said, My experience has proved that there is greater happiness, purer joy, and more delight to be obtained in serving God and being active in His work than can be obtained in any other direction. We illustrate the great truth that a people can be a profoundly religious people and at the same time a very happy people. I do not believe there is any happier people on the earth than the Latter-day Saints. 
And then he said, there must be the fountain of happiness within us. And wherever we go and have that spirit within us, we shall be happy. We should cultivate this and teach it to our children. President Hinckley said it this way, enjoy your membership in the church. Enjoy your activity. Be happy in that which you do. Cultivate a spirit of gladness in your homes. And then he said again, let the light of the gospel shine in your faces wherever you go and in whatever you do. I am so thankful for the spirit of gladness my parents cultivated in our home. I thank both of them for their influence and for the difference it's made in my life to have them share and nurture a sense of humor, a spirit of optimism, and a cheerful disposition. Another time I can share more about my father, but for now I have a few more things to say about my mother, who's close to 90 years old and so chose not to come today. <laughs> she had her choice. <laughs> One of her most wonderful qualities is her ability to laugh at herself. Eleven years ago, she suffered a major stroke. This affected her in many ways, including her speech and her reading and writing. Just four months after that stroke, my mother was right here in the Marriott Center participating in the BYU Women's Conference. One of the things she said in her halting way was not to wait to have a stroke. She felt she'd waited too long. <laughs> she thought you could probably enjoy it more if you had it when you were younger. <laughs> One time, my brother Frank and I were visiting her in her hospital room. We were watching as she went over to the mirror to brush her teeth. She picked up the tube of toothpaste and looked at it for quite a little while, and then very carefully she put a dab of toothpaste on her finger. We kept watching, not wanting to interrupt and trying not to laugh yet. She looked in the mirror and down at her finger, and then she began to rub the toothpaste on her nose very carefully. Well, that did it. We started laughing, and she laughed harder than we did. <laughs> Frank commented she wouldn't be getting any cavities on her nose. <laughs> this past September, I took my mother with me uh, to St. George for a women's conference. We were uh, there during the time of the annual senior games. Well, we shuffled into the motel, Mom with her walker and me dragging all of our luggage, and we noticed all these ship-shape senior athletes. I said to her, hey, mom, they think we're here for the senior games. <laughs> They're wondering what our sport is. <laughs> <laughs> I've spent some challenging times in places far away from my family and from basic conveniences. One thing which has made all the difference is to receive letters and packages from home. Once when I was in Hong Kong, my mother sent me a nose and glasses combination. How did she know I'd love that? broken on this side. How did she know? It, she's my mother. That's how she knew. I wore them all around, including on the buses, and it was so fun to watch the smiles around me. <laughs> when I was in Indonesia, she would send boxes filled with lovely things that she had found in the basement or from neighbors or at DI, people wanting to get rid of everything from rat traps to aprons and from old drapes to kazoos. While I was in Africa, she sent me a Tupperware catalog, saying she thought it would be wonderful for the sisters out in the bush to have a Tupperware party. <laughs> <laughs> we can pass along joy and good cheer and a good sense of humor to our children and to others. President James E. Faust, for many years, as I have blessed newborn children, including my own, I have blessed them with a sense of humor. I do this with the hope that it will guard them against being too rigid and that they will have balance in their lives and that situations and problems and difficulties will not be overdrawn. A mother who was diagnosed with cancer told of being isolated in a bare room for many long days behind closed, lead-lined doors feeling like a prisoner convicted of a crime she did not commit. Then she tells of her oldest daughter coming to visit. She sat down behind the lead screen that separated us and proceeded to take off her boots and socks. She slipped her socks on her hands and pretended they were puppets and spoke through them. I laughed for the first time in months. That simple act brightened my outlook instantly. 
Gratitude is a critical part of joy and happiness. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. You never know when one might be missing. <laughs> gratitude leads to joy, to happiness, just as joy and happiness lead to gratitude and contentment. President Lorenzo Snow taught, it is the duty of every Latter-day Saint to cultivate a spirit of gratitude. President Hinckley, I am satisfied that our Father in Heaven likes to see His children happy, not miserable, but happy. There are some who think that joy is a luxury, one of life's frills that they cannot afford or do not deserve. But it is God who decided that joy is the very purpose for our existence. We exist to have joy. His plan really is the great plan of happification. Elder Matthew Cowley, I like to get fun out of this business. Good, wholesome, righteous fun. Get a kick out of it. When I obey the principles of this gospel, I am the happiest man on earth. When I don't, then I am depressed. Then I have a right to worry about myself. But when I am trying to do the best I know, then I tell you I'm having the time of my life. Elder Neil A. Maxwell, ultimate hope and daily grumpiness are not reconcilable. Wow. Ultimate hope and daily grumpiness are not reconcilable. He said it is ungraceful, unjustified, and unbecoming of us as committed Church members to be constantly grumpy or of woeful countenance. President Hinckley, it is very important to be happy in this work. We have a lot, of, a lot of gloomy people in the Church because they do not understand, I guess, that this is the gospel of happiness. It is something to be happy about, to get excited about. I hope you enjoy this work. I really do, he said. Notwithstanding all the problems, this is a work of happiness. This is the good news. This is a work of joy. I hope you can laugh and smile and be happy and rejoice before the Lord. And then he said, Your happiness lies in following the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your happiness lies in faithfulness and in righteousness. That's it. That's the key. Our happiness lies in following the gospel of Jesus Christ, in having faith in Him, believing Him, coming unto Him, becoming more like Him. May our deep and tender feelings about Jesus Christ, our Savior, bring us comfort and peace, hope, joy, contentment, optimism, gratitude, a countenance of divine cheerfulness, and a genuine happiness. He is the one who invites us to be of good cheer and do not fear, for I, the Lord, am with you and will stand by you. I know he does. I know he will. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, amen.